Welcome back everyone. In this video, let's get started with asynchronous actions. Up until now, we have had a look at synchronous actions. Or in simpler terms, as soon as an action was dispatched, the state was immediately updated. If you dispatch the buy cake action, the number of cakes was right away decremented by one. And the same goes with buy ice cream action as well. Now this works perfectly fine for our cake and ice cream shop application. However, you will eventually build applications where things happen in an asynchronous way. For example, you will make async API calls to fetch data from an endpoint and use that data in your application. But before we dive into the code on async actions, let us first understand what we need to accomplish. The application we are going to build simply fetches a list of users from an API endpoint and stores it in the Redux store. So let's try to get an idea of how our state is going to look like, what are the different actions, and how the red user would work. Once that is clear, let's write the code. First, let's talk about the state of our application. Typically, with data fetching, we go with three properties for the state object. The first property is a loading flag, which indicates whether the data is currently being fetched or not. If you have an application with UI, this flag would help you display a loading spinner in your component. The next property we would have is the data itself. The data in our example is the list of users. The initial state though, we would have an empty array as no users have been loaded yet. The final property is an error message. Now our API request might fail for some reason. In that scenario, instead of getting back the data, we get back an error which we store in the error property. This message again can be used to display the error to the user if your application has a user interface. So that is our state object. Next, let's talk about the actions. We're going to have three actions in our application. The first one is to fetch the list of users from the API endpoint. The action type would be fetch underscore users underscore request. The second and third actions are dependent on this first action. If the data was fetched successfully, we have an action with the type as fetch underscore users underscore success. If there was some error fetching the data, we have an action with type fetch underscore users underscore failure. So we have three actions. Finally, let's talk about the red user function. If the action type is fetch users request, we basically set loading to true. If the action type is fetch users success, we set loading to false and users to the data returned from the API. If the action type is fetch users failure, we set loading to false and error to the error returned by the API. And that is pretty much our application. So with these points in mind, let's go back to our editor and implement the code. For this new application, I'm going to create a new file called asyncactions.js. Within this file, we need to define three things, the state, the actions, and the reducer. Let us first start with the state. The state is going to be an object with three properties as we have already discussed. So const initial state is going to be an object with three properties, loading, initially false, users, an empty array, and error, which is an empty string. Next, we have the actions. Now remember, earlier in the series, we spoke about action creators, basically functions that return an action. We're going to be doing the same in this application as well. So let's begin by declaring the constants for the action types. Const fetch underscore users underscore request 
is going to be equal to the same string value. const fetch underscore users underscore success is going to be the second type. And the final one is fetch underscore users underscore failure. All right, next let's create our action creators. The first one is to fetch the data. So const fetch users request is equal to an arrow function where we are going to return an object with type fetch underscore users underscore request. The second action creator is to store the list of users if the request was successful. So const fetch users success is going to be an arrow function where the argument is an array of users and we return an object where type is set to fetch users success and now we have a second property which is payload set to the argument users. The third and final action creator is to store an error message if the request failed. So const fetch users failure is equal to an arrow function where the argument this time is an error message and we return an object where type is fetch users failure and the payload is the argument error message. All right, now let's define our reducer function. const reducer is equal to an arrow function. And the arrow function gets two arguments, state with a default value of initial state, which we have already defined. And the second argument is action. Based on the action type, we need to return a new state. So if the action type is fetch users request, we're going to return an object where we make a copy of the existing state and only set the loading flag to true. If the action type is fetch underscore users underscore success, we return an object where loading is false users is going to be action dot payload which is the property that we are now sending through the action creator and we also clear out the error message if at all there was any the final case is fetch underscore users underscore failure so if the api request failed our loading is done so loading is false users is going to be an empty array again an error is going to be action dot payload so action dot payload in each of these cases corresponds to the payload property that the action now contains if the request was successful the payload is an array of users and if the request failed the payload is an error message the same we are using in our reducer all right, now the final step is to create our Redux store. So at the top, const Redux is equal to require Redux. And const create store is equal to Redux dot create store. Then at the bottom, const store is equal to create store and we pass in the reducer function. And that pretty much completes our setup to understand about async actions. What is left now is to make an API call and dispatch the appropriate actions we have in our application. Let's see how to proceed with that in the next video.